What's up guys? Today we're gonna climb in Live Arena again and I've been in a little bit of pickle that I kind of wish I had one more nook set. I mean, I could make another nook set but it would be like a significant downgrade on my next attack nuker. That's why I really want to get more defense scaling nuker, harema, you know. But anyway, I mean Defense and 8 speed scaling nuker, I could definitely could one or two could use one or two more on both of them. Because I have multiple sets. And obviously attack nukers are much more common and you need way more of those sets. And one thing that I kind of neglected recently is that I didn't have my Senna geared because uh, I was testing Eva and stuff. And Right now I don't have my Wukong geared, I'm gonna fix I'm gonna fix it later, but we don't have either Eva or Wukong right now. I think I mentioned it many times, but I think both of them are super good. Wukong is maybe even almost underrated in uh, Live Arena. He's top tier. The issue is that the things that counter him counter all of my other champions that I use as well apart from like Armands and that's make makes me very easy mark for some of the more well un endowed Akons let's say that I meet a lot and commonly are familiar with my teams as well not just because I make content but because I play a lot live arena and there's only so many people in the top of the ladder and people are gonna know each other but we're gonna go back to Xena I actually I've had some really good stuff with Xena. I don't know how I didn't have her geared in a couple of weeks or like last couple of weeks. I still plan to get 4 star blessing on her. It will totally be worth it. I just haven't seen it in the shop. It's honestly funny that I still have a, have her at 2 star blessing after this long time. But I haven't seen her in the split soul shop more than this. And I haven't gotten like... Narsa's soul and there's definitely a bunch of things that I would buy if I could. Maybe even 3 star soul for Staltos or Helicat because they would gain a lot of defense from that, like 650. But I don't have tokens of course to buy everything. But definitely I will get Xena to 4 star. I've always said that I feel like she's a little bit she underrated. She's definitely underrated. I would say that in general Wukong is better. But they kind of do different things and I use Rotos a lot, who is kind of similar. But anyway, I put my second best attack scaling nuke gear on Xena. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. I could make her do a little bit more damage, but I kind of focus on the speed as you can see. It's pretty fast. I, actually, I, I would also... I should... Um, Reroll this and try to get attack because I used to use it on Rotos, but not anymore. But um, her gear is actually very good. This is one kind of kind of funny clause actually. So it's triple speed with no crit rate, but it has both attack and defense. So I I can kind of use this on anybody. It's not perfect, but um, not having crit rate is like the least least um. Least horrible subset to miss on close, so that's actually pretty good. Especially when it's triple speed, it's really um, something that you want. I, I feel like triple speed is better than triple attack or defense, but that's kind of my universal flex gloves that I can use on everybody. And overall the gear is very good. Maybe the boots are like the worst piece of gear. Even those are pretty good, but you definitely use that crit damage subset but anyway we're gonna go with the Xena today uh, I can't by the way funny thing I can't put her on stone skin I wish I would but um, I actually do have I think I've had this for a while I do have did I I think I might have chaos or this one did, did I do it no I didn't even chaos or it I actually have a great banner <laughs> I mean I pretty much have the same banner on both reaction and stone skin but I will need one more piece and of course, you know, Banner is hardest piece to get on Stone Skin, obviously. And I got almost the perfect one. So I'm sure I will eventually get like some 
either ring or amulet, but amulet is of course the most easiest one to get, but anyway, we're gonna go with Xena today, don't have Eva or Wukong, so I'll keep that in mind. Let me double check. I generally do this team since I have a bunch of champions and like sometimes I have Mountain King geared, sometimes don't, so I usually sort them by tax, let me double check. Yeah, Wukong doesn't have attack, Eva doesn't have attack, and where is Xeno? Uh, yeah, I'm, dude, I'm always so terrible finding like specific champion. It's always like in the middle of the screen and I don't see it, but okay, Xena has stack, so we can go. Nice. Okay, we didn't get the first pick in the first fight, meaning that we have the deal with Armands. That's kind of um, not good, but we'll see. Yeah, I've mentioned it before, but I wish I could. I wish there was a mechanic to swap the level of blessing on different champions. I know that some other games actually have this, but. I would really love to swap the six star, <laughs> six star stole from my six star blessing from my Duchess to Angora because Duchess have, has kind of been very hardly nerfed, even though it's like indirectly recently. But that's literally the only champion that I have with six star polymorph. I really need it, but I would rather have it on Angora to be honest. But. I'll have to go with Duchess just for that, to have like a tiny tiny little bit of uh, counter play against the Armands, possible. Possibly. Um, life Harvest on Wukong. Is that gonna be support Wukong? Life Harvest. I feel like um, it makes more sense if it's a support Wukong. But it could totally be an old build, but... I don't think we're gonna go with UDK, I guess we're gonna go with Xena, but... I feel like if it is a support Wukong, that's almost a mistake, because that means that he can't pick any any other supports anymore, but... Is he baiting me to not pick the UDK? I mean, I don't have to pick UDK, but... If he goes with Nuke Wukong, it would be good. Maybe we're gonna... He does have the... Okay. Let's go with Mikaki. He does have the Angora passive and cleanse, so... Mikaki isn't like completely gonna demolish him if I ban the Armands, but let's go with Mikaki anyway. I always say that I should use Mikaki more. The issue is that I don't have two insane... Okay, it was an Ukukon. I don't have two insane sets of speed gear. Um, yeah, I mean, we're not gonna have Necret if we do this. Am I gonna regret it? Uh, yeah, I think we're gonna go with the UDK. The thing is that Xena is, of course, CV counter, not Arbiter counter. She doesn't do enough blast to actually Prox Xena passive and give us turn meter and attack buff. Almost certainly this Leorios is gonna go before my Xena and one shot it unless we proc reaction. I think we only had one piece of it or was it two? But I'm pretty sure I would have to proc it on both of the hits. Maybe maybe if I just proc it once and with the just as passive and bolster set, maybe I can survive it, but I need at least one reaction proc. If I do do get it, then that might be pretty good. Probably I would still one-shot the Arbiter at least. And if I can get two kills on Xena A3, meaning, ah, meaning on the Wukong and Arbiter, that means that I would reset the cooldown, but now the Wukong stole the stone skin, so that's not good. But what? 
Uh, okay, we kind of got in. Should I just go with the ally attack? I think we're just gonna go with the ally attack at this point. Yeah, I mean, maybe I should have done it on Leorios just to proc the passive. Okay. Mm. Uh, yeah, we should do it now. Okay, I, I guess that good speed on Xena helped because I'm kind of surprised that she went before Leorios considering that he got turn meter boost from Arbiter, but I did have, was it 252 or 256 speed on Xena, so she's pretty damn fast at this point. But yeah, I mean, it's nice to use Xena again. I this is this is not the best matchup at all to use her, but I think we're gonna do some nice things with Xena today. Come on, get feared, please. Fear, come on. Ah, and Duchess is not gonna revive us with turn meter, so certainly Xena is not gonna get. Another turn, I don't think it's kind of impossible. Leorios still has the other AoE nook, and if I didn't use the revive, then he will just not use it, so... Mm. Yeah, you... you I, I think we might have to pick the Necrite a lot today. I, I would much rather pick Helicat, but... This guy... I, Think we're just gonna surrender this? Yeah, I think we're just gonna do it. This guy had both Armans and Mukong. Both of them do buff strip, and well, both of them do polymorph and buff strip, and Wukong does the block buffs debuff as well. Helicat was a no go. Maybe I should have gone with Necrit instead of UDK. Hmm. Yeah, the, mm, maybe I should have gone with Saltus honestly because he didn't pick the Sif yet. The, the main reason to pick Senna is to counter a Sifi. I'm almost certain he would have gone with Sifi instead of Arbiter if I didn't early pick Senna, so maybe I'll adjust to that next time. I, I, I feel like I just need like one good piece of bottom piece gear on uh, on lethal so that I can get another really strong nuke build but the gap between that build and my next build will be pretty large so or maybe I can get the merciless set done soon I haven't had really the best luck with it but I think I have maybe like like a shield and maybe one good bottom piece at this point and maybe Kabul Shields, to be honest. Okay, let, let's let's try. Let's go with uh, Narsus An Angora this time instead of Duchess. We're not gonna get the attack buff for Xena, but she kind of can do it by herself. And we're not gonna get the Polymorph, but um, we do get the Revive with much higher turn meter boost or however you want to phrase it and that means that we might actually get a turn after the revive unlike with Duchess. Okay, now we see the Xena Sifi, I mean um, Harima Sifi and even though Harima is gonna reduce the Xena damage since she does to weaken our defense but she doesn't fully rely on it like Rotos so she does have a little bit higher multipliers overall it's still usable depending what kind of team he has. I think we're gonna go with that this time. I think, yeah, I think we're gonna use Necret a lot more today. Yeah, let's go with these. Maybe, maybe I can sneak in a Helicat, but I think he's gonna, he's gonna pick like Lockout or something. Maybe it will be better the next time if I if I can get the Arman so that they can draft it.
By the way, in case you haven't seen it, I wasn't very smart Yes, Ah, Grixia. Oh, I think I'm just gonna go with Mika again and see if I can cut in or get turns because of her being primal. Oh, she actually got banned. Interesting. Anyway, what I was gonna say, I was gonna shield a little bit. I probably wasn't the smart yes smartest yesterday. I didn't exactly post my um, my second video at the smartest time. I should have done it a little bit before. Um, oh fuck! Wait. Okay, I, I'll I'll shield for it afterwards. I mean, you probably know. I made I made my own recruitment video you should watch it but that's all i'm gonna say i'll i'll chill for it a little bit more after this battle but let's focus by the way i ha i had super funny uh thumbnail on it so you should at least check that out what happened was that uh i made like my own normal kind of semi crappy uh like uh Photoshop thumbnail. I mean, I'm not expert on it, but I mean, it's not like you need some kind of professional marketing thumbnails for raid videos. But then somebody just ran it through an AI, and the AI made like much better version of my um, thumbnail. So we went with that, or I swapped to it after he posted it. So you you can see my original thumbnail at the end of the video. And then on the actual video, you see, you see the AI generated thumbnail. But okay, so we are locked out. But um, maybe we can reset the Narciss, Narciss uh, abilities with Ankara A1. Let's hope that we get lucky. But yeah, I really wish Plarium would implement some kind of mechanic to swap the progression like polymorph between champions many many other games do this mechanic exactly because uh, it is insanely long grind it takes eight months to get one champion with six star polymorph that's assuming that you're kind of lucky and you actually see it on the okay that was kind of anticlimactic that's assuming that you're lucky and you actually see the champion on the split solo shop but if you're lucky it's eight months and that's insane there definitely should be the option to swap it between champions especially when Larium keeps using it kind of as an excuse or however you want to phrase it that they don't want to fix the game and balance the arena because they don't want to nerf champions and make people feel bad but they are nerfing champions. I mean, they just did a massive nerf on Duchess, basically making her completely useless in classic arena, at, the, at least in the high-end comp competitive side of it. She's completely useless. There's zero players using her, apart from me, because I don't have anything better. But um, they do do it, even if it's indirectly. So they might just as well do it properly and actually balance the game like their excuse was that people would feel that, like they are getting shafted if they nerf champions but they are gonna feel that anyway and instead of nerfing i mean it's gonna happen but Duchess hasn't been the top tier champion in years but there's like champions that are many levels above what Duchess was before her nerf and those are not getting nerfed, they should do it as well, but since they do have it, they should just give us some kind of mechanic that you can farm some kind of token, or maybe you get it with the daily locking rewards or whatever, and maybe you get one token every, I don't know, four months or six months, and then you can buy more of them with money. I mean, you know, I guess they have to make trillions of money, but... With that, you could swap, swap it between characters and your old champions that became useless. You could still um, 
save that progression and move it to another champion. Maybe I'll make another video about that topic, but I feel like that's something that um, for the long activity of the game, Plarium definitely should implement it. But I mean, <laughs> I'm sure they don't want to do it because that would like, you know, help some people, but uh, they should do it. I said this on the video with Drog that isn't released yet because I already did like a video with rats and um, with mobs, but um, Barium should hire me and Drog as a consultant to fix the game balance. <laughs> we, we, we could definitely fix it, we, we could do a good job at it. If anyone has any <laughs> has any connections to Plarium, then um, give them a call. <laughs> and obviously, they are not going to do that, but um, they should really put more emphasis on the balancing side of the game. We explain more about that on video with Doc on his channel, so make sure to check that out. I don't think that video is released yet either, but let me double check. Uh, but by the way, here, here was my video. Um, YouTube never allows you see. Ah, okay, I'll I'll show the thumbnail just from the file. YouTube has very bad UI if you. are if you want to see just one specific video and show the thumbnail. Yeah, I don't yeah, Drog hasn't released that video yet either. We did like I think like a four hour call on Sunday with Drog, so Ah, that, that's a pretty rough team. He has both the white duo and Lazarus. But he has Duchess. Maybe this is this is an opportunity to use Xena. The, the issue is that Lazarus does kind of counter both Necret and Helicat. That's kind of annoying, but I think we're gonna go with Helicat here. Yeah. If we go first and he doesn't have like Sifi or any other turn meter manipulator, if we go first then we will still get it and even though he can get the block buffs debuff but we might get a little bit use out of the helicat. Uh, well. By the way, I know some people give me lots of shit for not Picking champions instantly, but it is what it is. I mean, <laughs> other people take their time too, and I want to like focus on the videos. Th this is what I had on thumbnail. This is basically just uh, he, that guy ran my actual thumbnail through this AI um, like art maker, and it's basically my thumbnail, just a super version of it. So. It was kind of funny. Maybe, maybe I'll use more of these in the future. I really like this one, but uh, some of the other ones that it, it put out were maybe too unrecognizable and like unrealistic. They were making me like uh, Giga Chad Superman, and even though that looks cool, but I don't think that's gonna be a good thumbnail on every video. But I think on that video, it was it was very good thumbnail. But by the way, I left kind of like uh, what's the word for it? I know there's a word. What what's the word when you have like hidden meaning meanings in games and things? I just can't recall it out of the top of my head. But there's a hidden meaning in this picture. I think you can probably figure out like part of it, but not the other part. Nobody has uh, mentioned it yet, which I'm surprised. I thought somebody would instantly notice it, but nobody did. I mean. 
I kind of did mention it on my Discord, but I didn't see a single single um, comment pointing it out. It's two different things related to me, but uh, that's all I'm gonna say. If you know, you know. And let me know in comments if you if you know what I'm referring to. Okay, Rotos got the turn and now, now we're good. By the way, today's string of choice. I don't think you actually... wait. I don't think you can see this video on the video at all because of, of the green screen, obviously. But today, today's string of choice is gonna be Battery Lemon Lime. It's a pretty good one, I would say that Battery, I mean, it's one of the more expensive energy drink brands. I would say it's probably the best one. But it, yeah, it's like a super expensive one. Oh, kind of getting close. Getting re okay, I think we still lost. We still lost, we were close, but Lazarus is too good. Anyway, that's three losses in a row. Ah, oh, fuck. Last, uh, battery is very good. Kind of expensive. I really like the seasonal flavors that they have. The, the best battery that they have ever done, at least in my opinion, for sure, is the... Um, what is it called in English? Blueberry? The blueberry battery. That's that's a great one. I don't think it's available right now. I don't know if it's gonna be, but if you ever see the blueberry battery, you must try it. But yeah, we're not off to a great start today. It's three losses in row. Not good. I think we can do better, to be honest. Wait, it was three losses, right? Let me double check. Yeah. I mean, on the last one, we kind of almost sweeped his entire team, but then Lazarus got the turn and just demolished us, and there was no comeback at that point. We almost had it though. Maybe I will try to leave my second Rooker sometimes as the last pick and not the second last pick. Maybe I can get away drafting Rotos without UDK or something like that. I think those were pretty close and the drafts could have been different, so I feel like we can easily get a more than 3 fight win streak as well, so let's do that. Oh, he went for the Rotos and Wukong, but that's actually, I mean, that's, I'm gonna miss out on the new cars, but we already got Armands and now we're gonna get UDK. That's gonna put him in a bad bind, kind of like my enemies usually put me in, because uh, he can only ban one of those and he really needs to, <laughs> he, he can't play against either one of them, so we'll see what he does. Okay, surely, surely we have this, this battle in the back. We'll see. Uh, yeah, we're definitely gonna go with Dratzes on this one. He doesn't have... Doesn't have turned me the boost. Mikake does have the ally attack, but if we get the Dratzes whale up, it's gonna... Product us from the Rotos pretty well. I mean, we have the UDK, so. But. It's gonna die eventually. Should I just go with the Staldos? Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't think I maybe want to go with Xena against the Rotos in this matchup. There's a good chance that the UDK might still be banned. I think we're gonna go with Stalos. I hope we have enough damage, but I can basically ban whoever I want, so maybe I can do it. And Stalos is gonna be strong affinity against both Rotos and Ankara. Though my Staldus doesn't have 6 star blessing and he already doesn't have the highest damage and then he's gonna miss out on like 650 defense or whatever. And obviously we're not getting the crit damage that you get from 4 star and so on. But we're losing out on massively like his damage would be so much better if we had it. Okay, I think we're gonna go for the CV ban. Otherwise if he bans my Angora and I mean Narsus. And I would be kind of shocked if he did it, but if he did do that, we wouldn't have the damage, so I think we're gonna go with this. Gatsu ban? What? Like, how come he didn't ban the UDK or Armas? I totally don't. Doesn't compute in my brain. If I was him, I would, would have been super panicky that he picked both Rotos and Wukong. And I got Armands and UDK. There's no way I would have banned anything else than one of those two, and ideally both of them, but. Okay. Okay, nice, and we got a good double turn. we get rid of M Mikage? Yeah, I feel like we should do it on Mikage. I kind of want Mikage to get a turn eventually. Because she's gonna do um, attack buff. Or like buffs. And with her buffs and with Angora buffs, I might be able to block revive with Narsus A3 but maybe we don't even need to go that far oh Angkor almost died to that I guess I I was expecting his Angkor to be be as tanky as mine but I guess uh, not every Angkor is gonna be built the same way so okay I got destroyed a couple times I kind of destroyed this guy it happens I I can feel his pain. I mean, I literally use all of those champions and <laughs> I get destroyed by UDK and Arman, so that that hits very close to home, let's say. But okay, now we're 3-1, now we're gonna get a massive win streak and finish the video with uh, with only wins and no losses. No? Okay, that's good. Yeah, it's time of the video to check out what, what's going on on Reddit today, if there is anything. Okay, 3v3 tips. Let's, uh, first of all, nobody ever talks about it as 3v3, but okay. That sounds interesting. He first picked Dutchess, that's kind of unusual. I mean he does it does have it at plus four, but it's not really it's not even like a top pick at this point, and it's definitely not something that you would pick as one of your first champions usually. Um Yeah, we're just gonna go with Armands and Narsus, I guess.
damn, he he hit the turn limit. Uh, that that definitely hasn't happened to me in Classic Arena, but I can understand how that would happen to newer accounts. That's kind of funny. Wait, why did I just open the image? Okay, he got Angora. Weird draft. I feel like he's just picking my champions to try mess with me. I guess that's gonna be again new Wukong, even though he's trying to hide it with um, intimidating presence. But even the other one with life harvest was a new build. I'm gonna assume that one is as well. No Xena this time. We're not gonna force it, but I am definitely gonna, gonna be Xena. I mean, Xena is definitely a champion that you shouldn't force in every battle. It's more like a counter to specific teams. We didn't really draft Xena perfectly today, so... I hope we can get some of those battles later on. I've definitely had them on my other Xena videos, so... If her performance now was not impressive, go check out my other Xena videos where I properly used her and had some really good battles. Damn, Reddit is super active today. There's so many posts that are only from a couple of hours ago. Okay, Lazarus and Grixia. He, he, he saved his best stuff for the last. Um, okay. That, that's fine. I think we might actually go for the... Lazarus ban and not Grixia. Let's see if we can do it this way. We're not gonna have like any reviver on the team. That's a little bit scary, but we'll see. And we're gonna get locked out as well. But yeah, hitting turn limit is kind of funny. He had one hour, 10 minute arena battle. And basically the enemy UDK couldn't kill his Wokos. He, he was basically memeing, let's say. That wasn't a real battle, he just... He didn't want to take the loss and end it. Wait, did we fight this guy before today already? Maybe? Yeah, I mean, we can switch the form, but there's not... I mean, I guess we're gonna go for a buff strip, but... We can get some immediate gains on the other form just yet. We also didn't really manage to remove his stone skin, sadly. Wait. And the Wukong also stole my... I feel like the Wukong already was in stone skin, and then he all also stole my stone skin unless he didn't have it but he stole the stone skin now he has it way longer that's not good for us i think we i think we lost this one as well god damn it like my my udk getting his stone skin stolen is like super terrible in this matchup especially since he's running with the Wukong, and now he's obviously gonna go for the A2 and so on, and we can't stun him, I mean, we could have, otherwise... I don't think I can even stun the Grixia, but I guess we're just gonna use it. Yeah. Okay, m maybe that will be useful, who knows. Oh yeah, I guess he does have the immunity anyway, since he does have a lot of it. I don't think he broke Hail Smasher there. I was expecting a little bit more damage. Yeah, let, let's farm some Kill Streak and Whirlwind of Death procs on Masteries, and he's gonna get that up, but uh, it's still better to kill it. 
not only is he gonna get it up, but it's gonna be revived with Ankara. But it's still worth for us to do. Oh, he's... He didn't go for it, he's fishing for the... cooldown reset on the A2, which I guess he got. And uh, that should basically kill everybody else except Rotos in my team at this point, because UDK is pretty low HP. I don't think... There's no way that my Narsus can take this hit. Oh, okay. That wasn't very high damage. Definitely not with Helmut Splasher proc, but maybe he has like semi high accuracy on the Wukong. I don't. I'm not quite sure if we can kill the Darts. It looks pretty high health, and we don't have attack power, but let's see. Okay, good. Kind of close, but the, it was good enough. Did Rotos, <laughs> Rotos finally carry us to a win? Okay, <laughs> that's that's game over. Narsus gets the chance to knock and it's done. Okay, we started out pretty bad. We're starting to turn it around, but I mean, our enemy teams today are pretty scary. I mean, consider the fact that I pretty much banned everybody's worst champion in every battle. And the team still look very strong. But I hope we get some Xena battles because I didn't use her for a couple weeks and it would be kind of anticlimactic if I don't even if I only got like a loss on her and no proper showcase. Damn. Galapir Lazarus and Armand. No no way we can do this one, but um Let's go for the Mitral. Yeah. I don't know if my drink is about to explode. I went to get a second one. Um, I dropped it. Let's see if it explodes. There, there is restricted if you like. Um, if you stir it on the one direction, it usually doesn't do it. Okay, we're good. Nice. Didn't, didn't explode on my face. Great. Hmm. Yeah, that's a pretty scary team. I mean, but yeah, we, we have to go for the Armand's ban, but he still has like 
insane team outside of that, so... I don't know about this battle. Maybe a little bit about my pay grade, to be honest. <laughs> Oh fuck, I spilled it a little bit. <laughs> it, it was fuller than I was expecting. <laughs> Not a lot, just, just like a drip. Damn. Narciss got one shot. Reaction didn't save us. And everybody's... Everybody's locked out, I can't even do a revive. I don't think... I don't think it's looking good. Dude, I wish so bad I... I would pull Galater. I... I, I, I swear you... If I get, got Galater pull... With that one pull, like, I could get so much things done with Galatir, especially in Classic Arena. I mean, that one pull would be so huge still. Galatir is just insane champion. He's better than Dutchess as a tanky reviver. And that's like a small part of what he does. That's not even the main part. The main part is that, well, like, he has tons of different CC, but... He does the buff strip and lockout and a couple other things, but... He, he fulfills like multiple roles in one package. And not only does he like full him, fulfill them, but he's the best at them. I mean, right now he's the best tanky reviver in raid. Better than Duchess. And like I said, that's not even his main role, so... And of course you get the benefits of being primal. I think I have to go for this even though I want to cleanse my Ankara, but I have to go for the Hex. Um, ah, and of course he resisted because of his passive and his build with resistance and that gives him accuracy and damage mitigation. Yeah, he, he's super busted. I really, really, really hope that Galatir is gonna be my first Primal Champion, assuming that I'm gonna get that, get my first Primal in the next, like, year, but, um, it's possible, right now there isn't that many Primals, so I hope to pull it as soon as possible, but yeah, he, he's super sick, he looks cool as well, not only is he insanely OP, but he does look cool, cool as well. Okay, we're just gonna surrender. He, he has like trillion lockouts and everything else. I mean, Shu Chen has lockout. Uh, Shu Chen has lockout. Um, Galatir has lockout and Lazarus has lockout, so... What am I gonna do? I mean... It isn't like the early days of Live Arena that I can just <laughs> meme around with Samson and whatever different different stuff I feel like playing with that day against these guys. Even if I want to win, I can't win, and I'm definitely not gonna win with meme picks. So. And yeah, we talk a lot about game balance and how to fix it, both on my video and on Drog's video. That are, I guess, probably both gonna be released this week, so make sure to watch them. But more more than you guys watching them, I wish Plarin would watch them, to be honest. <laughs>
by the way, here's the funny thing. So, I made the plan announcement like very late my time yesterday, but it wasn't even like early on in the day, but at like 11 p.m. or 12 p.m. or whatever, I announced that I'm making my own plan. And I just woke up to do this video, and I have like trillion, trillion DMs on my Discord, and I didn't reply to any of them. Like, I didn't even read them because I just woke up and started doing the library in a video. So I'm gonna have... I'm gonna have an interesting read because I have like... Uh, I have like two hours of Discord messages to process after this video. Uh, Xena isn't gonna be good here. I don't know what to do. I guess I'm just gonna go with the Stalos. I do have a good amount of tier 1 tokens that I could use, but if I go for everybody, like Narcissus, Stalos, um, Narcissus, Stalos, Helicat, uh, Xena, and possible new champions, I mean, I'm definitely not gonna have enough for everybody. But. <laughs> I'm not even getting any of them in the split soul shop, so... Which one? I think... Are we still gonna go for... Yeah, we're gonna go for Krixia ban, yeah. Krixia does also have the... Uh, the cooldown reset, and maybe we can... Well, I mean, I guess both of them have busted, but... Maybe we can, or we have a higher chance to polymorph the Galatir. That's the one way that you can maybe, in RNG sense, uh, defeat Galatir, that he might get polymorph. But I don't think just because you have a chance to polymorph an OP champion, that's not enough counterplay. We definitely need other mechanics as well. Yeah, he took the UDK that I always covet, but we also got, I mean Rotos, but we got the UDK, so he, he kind of uh, is regretting drafting it a little bit. Maybe that buys enough time for us to actually try to, <laughs> try to do something about this and win this battle, but let's see, Galatir is pretty goddamn busted, so... Okay, okay. Holy moly, thank you RNG Jesus. I, I thank you. I mean, that, that's that's the only way we could basically win, but we got it. I mean, we got the polymorph proc. That's why I'm picking that goddamn, goddamn stupid duchess who, who was nerfed to the ground. She does have that polymorph and, I mean, duchess is good, not get me wrong, but it's not that good. And the reason why I'm really using her is because of the polymorph. That, that's how... That's how big deal the polymorph is. I mean, I don't even have a single attack scaling nuker on my team. I I pretty much only pick Duchess for polymorph, <laughs> and just for her to like stand there and be pretty with her bolster set. But I'm not really actually actually expecting anything else out of her other than those passive effects that are not even a part a part of her kit. So, okay, we won. Are we? I think we're not 50 50. Yeah, we still have one more loss, but okay, we're, we, we, we can do this. I mean, we, we can get even. Okay, we're gonna go beyond the even. Come on. Not, not to, uh, not a negative mindset. Okay, we got the Armands. Maybe that's enough to pressure him, him and get... Wait, is this the same guy I just fought? Maybe it was.
Mm. Are we just gonna go with the same beaks all over again? I guess we are. Well, except that he didn't pick the Rotos this time, so I could pick it, but he can't pick UDK anymore, so... <laughs> I almost feel like I have better team this time than last time, but let's see what other nuker he has. Yeah, I hate Galadir so much, he's so goddamn boss champion, I wish I, I were to get him though. Let's be honest, I really wish I would get Galadir, but goddamn he's so stupid. I hate him, but I really want to get him. I I, I guess uh, I guess Plarium is uh, playing as arena players like a fiddle, because I'm pretty sure that's the exact reaction that they want <laughs> they want to um insight in us Yeah, the Georgie is pretty scary, but uh, can we make it? I feel like um, his team is very squeezy. Even that Galadir is kind of low HP, and both the, like the Guardian is too. I can most certainly kill the Georgie with A3, even through the Harimas passive. So. Yeah, we're just gonna get rid of the other ones and I'm not gonna get any weak hits and we're gonna take our time on this. I think we're good though. This is one. Well, I mean, I guess I can get trillion weak hits in row. Let's see. I mean, we won. There's no way we're gonna lose anymore, come on. Okay, he, 
He, he took his time, but goddamn that Galadir is strong though. Let's actually, um, let's admire his kit a little bit. So, again, he, he's a primal, he's not gonna get locked out or he can change form. And both of the forms are very usable. And they both have passive scales with resistance that, that is super interesting. And I guess on this form, the second part of the passive is super good as well. He has the... He can get up to 25% damage mitigation if you have enough resistance and 500 resistance isn't too hard to get on him at all. He even has a nice 50 base resistance but prevents this champion's death and keeps them alive on 1 HP when hit by a fatal hit then equalizes their HP. The level of this champion will be brought up to the average HP level of the team. That basically means that you can't kill her, kill him, and he's gonna get healed to full or very high HP. That's an insane passive ability, especially on like a support champion. Like what? Cleanse, turn meter boost, heal, and uh, block debuff buff. Very strong ability. Revives all of the champ. This is basically like a Python revive plus you get the whale. So it's not like, let's say, Sifi or Angora. Often the 50% turn meter is not quite enough to actually actually get a turn on them. And But it's still good. And at least if the enemy doesn't have AoE damage, they can touch them. And then you are guaranteed to get a turn. But it's still, I mean... It's better revived than Duchess has, and this is like the 8th eight best thing about Star Sage Galatir. Even the 8th one, I mean, both of the a ones are super good. Attacks all enemies, fills the turn meter of all allies by 10% on A1, also fills the turn meter of each ally by an extra 5% if they have any active boss placed on them by this champion. Of course he does tons of boss, so it's an insane A1. I mean, this is just A1. That, that's not like... On some other champions, this would be like their A2 or A3. Then on the other form, again... We have a passive that synergizes with resistance. He's gonna get enough accuracy. That is 75% of his resistance. And of course, he has tons of debuffs on this form. Then another effect... If an enemy accuracy is higher than this champion's resistance, has 50% chance of transferring any CC debuffs back to the enemy when placing these debuffs on this champion. So not only does he have resistance, but he's also immune to CC anyway as a good measure. So again, AoE A1 decreases the turn meter of all enemies by 10%, and then you even get an extra 5 if they got debuffs, so it's sick. Buff trip and lockout, and you can't even counter attack, so uh, Taros isn't gonna hit you if you hit hit um, marriage car or anything like that. Or just the mastery procs and revenge accessories and whatever else that you might have. Accuracy buff, uh, decrease resistance debuff. And stand on all enemies, and since he also does the buff strip and lockout on the other skill, it's super good combination together. But yeah, and on top of all of that, he has insanely good base stats: high HP, high defense, 115 base speed, and also 50 resistance for for the good measure. But yeah, that's an OP champion if you have ever seen one. I hate. That it exists the game. I wish I had it. I mean, it is what it is.
Wait, why am I being injustice? This isn't like six months ago. My brain stopped working for like a split second right there. Of course, we're gonna go with Armands. Okay, 8.8k rating enemy. I'm not sure about this one either. Doesn't really seem like a battle that I might be able to take, but we'll see. Okay, he went with Sifi. Maybe we can finesse him with... With Xena, who knows. I, we'll, give, we'll give it a try at least. I want to go with Xena, but I don't want to pick it too early, so I'm thinking what else should I go with here. I guess we're just gonna go with the UDK. Okay. You can still pick another, uh, <laughs> another lockout or something annoying. Um... Yeah, I don't really want to go with Rodos, but should I? I mean, the Narcissus can just blow up the Rodos, but I mean, he can blow up Saldus even easier, so I guess I just do it. I mean, no way we can beat this guy anyway, to be honest, so. He even has everybody on 6 star blessing. Mm -mm, yeah. Not good. Oh, okay. Well, we did get to cut in with Xena. The issue though is that um, obviously, uh, obviously we're not ki gonna kill anybody. I think I'm just gonna open with the uh, Xena A2 as well. We're definitely not gonna kill anybody either way, and we're not gonna get another turn in row instantly, even though we stole a lot of turn meter. But that's not gonna happen. If we were to get a second turn Xena before Narsus, it would be pretty nice, but we didn't even... <laughs> we barely broke the shield on Sifi and nobody else, so the second turn wouldn't be quite enough. Okay, let's slowly try to steal HP from Narsus. The issue is that we're not just... We're not gonna be able to stay alive that long. Just is almost got one shot on that first. Ah, I wish I got the one one chance that I had to win was if I brock um brock polymorph there, but okay, we, we lost it. I can't do any damage on Rotos against Harima, so A3 is gonna do, do like 20k. I can I can show it on the video, but if the Harima wasn't on the team, I would do like 250k damage on the Narsus with the Rodos A3, but now we're gonna do like 20k, so let's see. Yeah, 39k, okay. Fair enough, but it would kill the, uh, the Narsus like three times over if we just didn't have to face the Harima passive.
Okay, maybe we got an easier opponent this time. He's not 8.8k, but 5.2k. Maybe that's doable. Yeah, I, I wish I could use Helicat, but in this meta there's just so many buff strippers every time. I mean, I didn't pick it, I saved it for the last pick, but he already has two buff strippers in the team. And he could even go go with the third one if I if I were to pick Helicat. Uh, I guess we're gonna go with Dutchess. Maybe we can rock Polymorph on basically anyone on his team apart from the warlord who we're probably gonna ban anyway come on I, I guess we're getting a little bit points but the way that it's made by plarium is that if you just ah you decay he's so gonna ban the narcissus Ugh. He has both UDK and Harma. Well, there's a chance that my Armands might be faster than his um than his water though. No, oh, okay, of course he banned it. Still, we're gonna go with this. But yeah, you're you're gonna gain more points even if you have fifty percent win ratio. So it's not like I'm having a perfect day to day and racking in a massive amount of points. Where I think we we're still at one more loss than win, if not fifty fifty. But it's not like uh, it's not like I'm humiliating my enemies today. If I can just get rid of that Harima, I might be good, but that's a big if. Damn, we get we lost the Angora Bassi when she died. That's pretty bad. We still haven't got any turns, so yeah, that that's rough.
Yeah, that's no way we can win anymore. We really needed to get Polymorph Proc on the Harima. That was the one way that we could have won this battle. Yeah, we're getting locked out before we even get a single, single turn in between those lockouts, so... Fun, fun, fun. What can I say? <laughs> About to go jump off a bridge after this video. <laughs> anyway... By the way, shout out to NBF. They did also invite me to join their clan, but um, let's face it, I would, I would just bring them down in CVC. And um, not only are they not Finnish speaking, but they are not exactly English speaking clan either. So I don't know if I would be a good fit hitting their clan anyway. So. But thanks a lot for them for offering that as well. And NBF is one of those clans that they do have many like top arena pushers. So everybody knows about them in the Platinum Arena scene, but they are not the most uh, vocal clan for obvious reasons. They don't like uh, hang out in official Discord or any other arena related Discords apart from like couple couple guys in their clan. And that's pretty much it. I'm sure they have their own uh, maybe maybe lineup, whatever they use. <laughs> they definitely have their own own communications. I think the Russians use their Telegram and I'm pretty sure NBF is using Lineup or something like that. Maybe WeChat. Maybe, yeah, maybe it's actually WeChat. I mean, I'm no expert. One of those. Lineup or WeChat. For sure. I um I had a friend who was like exchange student in Finland and uh, like Chinese obviously so I'm a little bit familiar with the uh, uh, WeChat and uh, like Chinese uh, culture and habits and so on. No, no, not an expert, but I had a friend and I used to hang out with a lot of Chinese exchange students. And I don't mean like um, like ethnic Chinese people who live in Finland. I mean like Chinese people who have never been outside of China except except when they came here as exchange students for some amount of time. I feel like there's nothing that I can, I can pick. I guess I should have just maybe gone with the Arbiter, but I don't think that would have been any good. She would just get stunned anyway by the Mikage. I'm sure his Mikage is faster than my Arbiter, so. Ronda can ignore the shields as well with the A2. But maybe the Narthus can survive with reaction and the shields are still gonna be useful against the other skills.
Damn, the Wukong actually dying there I think is bad because he's just gonna get the, the turn faster now than he would have otherwise. Okay, the Ronda is... Oh, okay, God, thank God. I didn't proc reaction there. The Ronda was surprisingly slow and I actually got a turn before it. Yeah, the, the Mika get passive is killing me. The Rotos is not getting turns. Okay, nice. Thank God. Okay, Necrot got in and we got rid, rid of Ronda. Maybe we can still salvage this battle. I mean, he's barely in like gold 4 and I'm battling to death with him, but it is what it is, so... Uh, yeah, let's actually go for the Mikage. At this point, it's, uh, if I kill the Wukong, he's just gonna get get his uh, turns back faster, so I'm just gonna roll the dice against the Mikage and see if I can get some non-weak hits against her. I, I can still totally lose this. Everybody's stunned. I'm constantly getting it. Turn meter manipulated by the Mikage. Wukong can stun me as well, and Mikage has the ally attack, so this is not over. Yeah, <laughs> Rotos is getting perma CC and not getting a single turn. Obviously this wouldn't be a thing if I had like a Sifi or something like that, but I don't, so... Okay, if we got the Mastery Brock there and we uh, got rid of the debuff, we could have won there, but we didn't get it and... We weak hit on the Mika, I guess, so it is what it is. I mean, I kind of saw that coming. <laughs> coming the second, I, I weak hit that, so. Dude, I don't want to, like, I'm not going to show my Discord, but I have, I have 38, uh, like 38 um, direct, like 38 different people is uh, DMing me on Discord right now. <laughs> There's gonna be some uh, some uh, some office work that I have to do after this video. Yeah, th that's that's gonna. That's gonna be a job by itself to sort out all of those DMs after this. May, may, maybe we have to go for the second clan <laughs> faster than I thought. We will see about. I'm I'm kidding. I don't know. I don't know if that's gonna be a thing. But uh, holy moly, there's there's a lot of DMs. I'm usually not that popular, I mean, I do get DMs, but not this many at, at a time, usually. By the way, I'm I'm gonna be careful, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna try to respond to everybody. If it so happens that I accidentally don't 
uh, respond to your message just send me another another one i do my best to not, not try to ignore people but um i'm getting bombarded today i wouldn't be shocked if i uh if i miss something but i'm i'm gonna be cognizant of that so probably not but we'll see Okay, he's going with the... He already picked Sifi and UDK. He's certainly gonna go with Trotos and maybe Wukong as well. Maybe. Okay, Taras and... Oh my god, I wasn't... Expecting that, but he can still last pick Rotos. I kind of want to pick Rock Rodos against him, but uh, do I want to face the Yumeko? I don't think so. But uh, how, how would I deal with the Taras otherwise? Uh. I don't exactly have, have faith that my Staldus can do this, but should should I go with that anyway? Okay, fuck it. Let's go with Xena. I mean, Xena is gonna get thrashed even harder than Staldus, but it doesn't matter if you die five times over or seven times over from one Daras AoE nook, so let's go with the Xena. Maybe I can cut in with the Sifi and do something better because of that. Okay, we got a turn. Maybe we can kill the... Charge it, if we don't weak it. Okay, nice. Okay, we might be able to cut in with Narsus, maybe. He's also kind of afraid of <laughs> using the Sifi uh, turn meter boost. Okay, nice, we cut in with Necrot. So he, he can't do a massive Tara snook. M maybe we actually got this battle. Yeah. Kind of looks like on paper I should totally lose this battle, but it seems almost too easy. I don't know what happened, I feel like I should have been trashed on this battle, but um, I guess he was super super scared of Texan. I feel like if he, if he just opened with the turn meter boost, um, my Xena wouldn't one-shot his team anyway, and Taras would one-shot my Xena if he just had the buffs, even through the Necret protection, so... But at this time it's too late for him to regret his action, we definitely should have it in the back, he doesn't have a Wukong or anything and we do still have the Revive, so we're good. Even the Taras passive that reduces our attack, it's not that bad with Xena because he, she basically has her own passive that does the exact same thing and every time she uses her abilities apart from the A1, she's gonna get 10% attack increase so it kind of offsets the, the Taras attack decrease.
Okay, this is gonna be the last battle of the day. Not my proudest live arena session, but I'm sure there's something that I could have done better, always, for sure, but it doesn't feel like there's a lot of things I can do. There's definitely something, I mean, there's always something, but it does feel like there's there's not, not a lot of things to do against these teams, so I feel a little bit hopeless. I'm really hoping for, for some pools. I'm hoping for Galatir and Harima. I need to get those two. If I were to get those two, then I would definitely be back in business. Like, I might use both of them in my classic arena defense. If I were to get them, and either one of them would be good. And also, like... Ah, oh fuck. Not, not Lydia. Ah, oh, okay. Damn. I'm talking too much. Almost missed that. Either one of them would be good in anywhere. Live arena, classic arena offense, classic arena defense. I'm sure I would find a way to use them. Maybe not classic arena offense, but who knows. Anyway. We are again against Astral. I fight against him very often. I feel like I usually lose to him every time. Except on last video, I think I beat him. <laughs> I don't want to over exaggerate, but I think I beat him two or three times. But... <laughs> I think that was the first time that I beat him, but I beat him multiple times, so that's gonna be the grand finale today, and let's see if we can continue it or if he's gonna get the revenge. Uh, uh, yeah, he got the Narcissus, I guess we're gonna go with UDK and Rotos. Yeah, you saw me get destroyed by the other Mikage. That just constantly reduced the turn meter of my Rotos with the passive and the A3. And I was also getting stunned and slept, so I definitely do have issues with those. Oh yeah, he does pick the R base every time. Picking UDK against him was completely um, horrible choice. I should have remembered that. And I also kind of want to pick Duchess to get Polymorph against Harima and Mikage, but it would be terrible against the Narsus, so. Not sure if I can do it. Yeah, I think we just lost this battle, to be honest. I think the draft is already over. And I have to get like perfect draft to beat him, and I did a terrible draft this time. I, I forget that he picks the R base every time. And, and he got the Angora, so that's kind of regrettable. But, I mean, I'm either gonna get Armands or I'm not, so... He, he would have picked Armands if I didn't pick, so... What? Xena ban? That's... That's kind of interesting. What? Okay, this kind of worked perfectly for me. I guess he was super scared of the Xena. He does have a lot of buffs in the team. I don't think he was expecting me to ban the Harima. Otherwise he he wouldn't, wouldn't have done this, but... Now we have Rotos and Armands against the team without Harima, so... I mean, he, he still has the R base 
stone skin and uh, taunt, of course. But if we just can get some <laughs> some turns, which you know, I do have the Arima, I mean the Armans in my team. Maybe we can maybe we can do this. Okay, he has everybody in stone skin. It's kind of regrettable because, <laughs> yeah, actually, I, I guess I guess it kind of looks bad unless I get Sweet Barry Brock on my Arbiter. We haven't got a weak hit. I mean, the Narsis can easily kill Rotos with one hit of the A2 because it ignores the passive, and Arbiter is kind of low HP, so it's looking bad. I couldn't steal a turn meter of the. Uh, of the Narsus, of course. I guess I should have pulled more team instead of our base. I, I probably made a massive mistake there. I did. I should have thought about it about the fact that my Rotos is gonna go before the Narsus. Oh, what? What? How? How did I survive it? What? Uh, he definitely didn't get Helm Smasher Brock there. Maybe we're good. He didn't get the double hit, I guess, and obviously, since we don't have the other stuff. Uh Arbiter is gonna die anyway, let's just use the revive, but he didn't get double hit. We had the bone armor reducing the damage taken. And my Rotos is pretty tanky, and I guess he didn't get Helm Smasher Brock, so somehow I survived it after all of those. Ah. Well, maybe I should have just done A2 on the Ankara and not the R base, but maybe I was getting super excited. I really wanted to get rid of the R base before she gets the town up, and it might have been worth it, but now the, now the Narsus again has the A2 and we did weak hit on the R base, so looking pretty bad. Okay, again, my Rotos survived. I feel like that Narsus doesn't hit very hard. The issue is that we just weak hit on the R base. Maybe we, maybe we could have won it otherwise. Though my Rotos is. Very low HP, but maybe Armans can still do some things. Ah, not yet. Okay. I think, yeah, we, we lost. Surely there's no comeback at this point. Come on. Wait, how is the... what? Is, is that Narsus in Relentless set? Did he just do two A1s in a row? And doesn't he already have his cooldowns back? He got revived by the Ankara. I am so confused. Is he just playing with me at this point? I feel like he could have... He could have used his skills. Yeah, I, I don't know what's going on, but we definitely lost. I feel like we should have lost a bit earlier, but it's definitely a loss. Yeah, I mean, we had some wins. I mean, this is happening pretty much every every session in the recent times because of the new champions and so on, but. We're having a hard time, we're meeting insanely strong teams though, so... If I were to get like 10 wins in draw against these guys, it would almost be... <laughs> it would be unbelievable, it shouldn't be really... I mean, it's possible, but you would have to have a very good account, and... Obviously, my account is a little bit outdated right now, so... 
yeah, these are so strong accounts that uh, even if I had good account, they would be hard battles. Anyway, that's it for... Wait, let me find it. That's it for today's video. Um, it is what it is. We kind of had hit and miss live arena session. That There are some wins and losses against rough battles. And I don't know if there's too many things that I could... I mean, like I said, I definitely could have done some specific things differently in battles, but I desperately need some roster changes, but outside of complaining about that on every video, go watch the video about my new clan and apply to it. But that's it, have a nice day and see ya.